Welcome back to Nightcap Chat, the pop culture podcast to talk all things comic books, video games, movies, TV shows, and more. Today we are talking multiverse crossover superhero fights with a little bit of a twist. I'm Blade O'Neill. I'm Ken Brown. I'm Lance O'Neill. And of course, before we dive into it, just want to thank everyone for taking the time to listen, like, share, subscribe, comment, and you know, share your thoughts on Nightcap Chat. We really appreciate your support, your patronage, your comments, suggestions. Uh, you know, we, we read them. We, uh, we do our best to respond and take them in consideration. And gosh, we just appreciate the support so, so much. So thank you, as, as always. So here we go. We got, we got another episode. We got something a little different. This is, it's like almost a game here. Um, but before we, whoa, oh, Lance, Lance made his lights red. <laughs> White maybe, time. Yeah, that's right. Oh, I wonder if I need to change the size of, of this a little bit. No, that's good. Okay. <clears throat> All right. Is there any, is there anything anyone has to bring up before we, before we jump right in? Any, any new books anyone wants to mention? Any, anything happening out in the world of pop culture? not sure anyone was paying attention to it but i did go see snake eyes this weekend no kidding i didn't even realize that came out me either (laughs) (laughs) i kind of figured so so what did the snake eyes fan think it was okay it wasn't like like oh my gosh best of all time but it wasn't bad i mean it was a pretty solid story all the way through i wasn't too crazy about the supernatural element they added in but Mm. i guess you know sometimes cobra had a supernatural element that they were chasing after at times in the storytelling in gi joe 2 as well but it kind of felt that was uh, a little bit over the top at the end but other than that it was if you like uh more or less bruce lee type of movies and just like heavy ninja fighting there was plenty of that and it was a pretty cool story do you do you think it went too far as a snake as a snake eyes fan like do you feel it it deviated from the character too much mm, it was its own story i mean I, I said too like adding the supernatural element to it was a little bit unneeded do you know what i mean but it like the huge giant snakes that showed up in the snake pit kind of a little bit too much indiana jones for me in a weird way of saying it but it was, it's a supernatural, I guess, ninja element of that, uh, that Arashikaji clan that they did. That was part of the, the storytelling they decided to input in there. Okay. So almost, uh, putting in like a more, a supernatural comic book element to it rather than just sticking with the original source material. All right. So out of, out of 10, what is the official Ken Brown rating? I'd give it about a six and a half. And I'm a Snake Eyes fan. I didn't hate it, but I didn't think it was the best thing I've ever seen. Well, there you go. There you guys have it. That's not too bad. 65%. That's a, that's a passing grade. It's barely passing. Yeah, it's better than, better than Rotten Tomatoes, 37. Ooh, wow. I think that's what I saw. I was like, what? Wow. Rotten Tomatoes. Yeah. I don't like any of well, They're usually questionable, so. Yeah. I mean, they're, they're yeah, usually 100%. 100%. <laughs> Well, uh, there you have it. There's Ken's Ken's uh, 60 second movie review of, of Snake Eyes. <laughs> I know, dude. Take that, Cisco and Ebert. <laughs> <laughs> so we've got a uh, we've got a fun show for you, uh, unless we blow it and we stop recording. <laughs> in, in that case, you probably won't be hearing this. Part. That's right. That's right. <laughs> See how, sorry, how meta. by percent, Boyd. It's oh, at you 38 percent. 38 percent. So even yeah, better. Than it's because what you just said just now. Just yeah, I just added into the average. <laughs> yep. Yep. There you go. Um, so it's always fun to debate, you know, Marvel versus DC. And and I always thought it was fun to like, you know, kind of come up with different fights, you know, between Marvel and DC. And I like I remember, especially like when I first moved out and, you know, I, I lived with the guys, you know, just kind of out of college. Right. You know, we had roommates and. And sometimes, you know, we would hang out, you know, maybe have a beer. And then, like, we would sometimes debate, you know, like, oh, who do you think would win? You know, like, okay, how about, you know, Green Lantern and, and Silver Surfer? And, like, we'd, 
we would try to come up with with different fun, interesting fights. So, I mean, this this isn't unique, right? You always think Superman versus Thor, right? Who's who's going to win? Or Superman versus Hulk? Or Batman versus Daredevil? Or Batman versus Spider Man? For whatever reason, Iron Man. Iron, oh yeah, Iron Man. I guess. Which shouldn't even be a contest. Sorry, DC yeah. fans. Sorry. That doesn't make sense. Um, <laughs> and everyone stop listening. So we're going to do this a little differently. We're going to come up with characters. So, for example, you know, and we'll, we'll, we're going we're gonna to start with Lance because we're, we're going to cheat here. And we're going to do the example that we just did before we start recording. So, so let's say Green Lantern. But... We're not going to say Green Lantern versus Silver Surfer. We're going to give Lance Green Lantern. We're, we're doing our example now. And we're going to come up with a different way of defeating this character. Yeah, okay. So if, I, if I'm Marvel, right, I'm, I'm going through my list real quick and I'm like, Green Lantern's here. I got to stop him. I'm going to go look over at Forge. But we're, yeah, but we're, yeah, we're, we're telling you, like, you can't, you can't fight, um, can't fight Silver Surfer or, or Thor or Nova. I'm going to go look at Forge say, Forge, I need you to kill him. It's going to be real easy. He's going to construct a green lantern ring that's yellow, and he's just going to kill him. It's just, it's over. He's just going to destroy him. He's going to use the same thing he uses, but just make it yellow, and he's not going to be able to do anything to him. Right? Am I wrong? So would he have to be in a yellow armor, too? Because... So is does the thing that he makes fire yellow rays at the Green Lantern is what I'm asking. Yeah, it, it probably just creates a yellow aura like like around him to to protect him. I mean, he's he's forged. You can make whatever his mind, you know, yeah. can can come up with. So why not just make something that he knows is going to take out the Green Lantern with a, a yellow ring and just use his uh, own power almost against him? So does, because I guess like Green Lantern being the guest in the Marvel Universe, he wouldn't know Forge exists, right? Yeah, so he Forge would go in blind. Him easily. Yeah. yeah, he would have no idea. He'd just be like, there's this guy. So Forge, Forge, uh, let's see here. <clears throat> According to Wikipedia, you know, a very reliable source here. He's a superhuman with, he has a superhuman intuitive talent for inventing mechanical devices backed up by the ability to perceive mechanical energy in action. So in theory, if he can create anything he thinks of, if he can think of a yellow lantern ring, he would somehow come up with a yellow lantern ring that would Easily. defeat him. Especially if he saw a green lantern using it, he'd just be like, oh yeah, uh. I can make this. So it'd almost be like a science version of the ring, right? Yeah. Although you'd have to argue how long is it going to take for him to make the ring, you know? I guess that is an argument. You know? Are we, it's not like... Are we, are we taking for granted that the other characters already know the weakness of the person that shows up in their universe? That is true. Yes, Yes. Yeah, so, so Forge already knows, like, here's how I beat this guy. I need something yellow. Okay. If if I'm going to go ahead and just expand the story, he starts fighting the X-Men, and they're wearing their yellow suits that day, and they're really <laughs> confused. <laughs> and the only person think- <laughs> that they can find is Beast. <laughs> Beast just gets destroyed. <laughs> Why can't they destroy us? <laughs> oh, I get it. It's got to be yellow. <laughs> That's awesome. Why? I Sorry, mean, Beast. come on. Like, how do you, how do you argue and with that? You know, yelling? Forge isn't in the fight. He's in the lab, like listening and they're, they're calling on their comms. Like, oh, this guy's fighting us. It's everyone wearing yellow. It seems like it's too simple, but let me test something. <laughs> First, we thought it was Wolverine's healing factor. Then we realized it's the yellow suit. <laughs> See, I mean, we're, we're talking comic book stories. I mean, there's, there's worse stories in what if comics. No. Right. For sure. Right. That's true. So, mm-hmm. I mean, why not? Just in order to save like time, they just like make a really dumb thing that never would have happened. Be like, uh, oh yeah, I hate that guy now too. I'm like, <laughs> okay, that was quick. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 
All right. All right, Ken, you're you're up next. Are you ready? Okay. We're gonna yes. I'm gonna go the other way because I, I have a I have one in mind. <sighs> okay. Wolverine in the DC universe, but he cannot fight Lobo. I don't think anybody in the DC universe could finish off Wolverine. They'd be able to neutralize him for like whatever amount of time it takes his healing factor to regenerate. But is there somebody like, you know, even Superman burning off all the skin and just down to the adamantium bones with his eye rays. Yeah, that could happen. But well, Superman just how, like, how fast is Wolverine's healing factor kicking in? Well, if Superman picks him up and puts him in the sun, that's it. Okay. So no, takes so, him out to the sun. so no, no Superman. Let's, let's keep it. No Superman. I either. think, yeah. I think Superman is, is a little, easy. that's, you said no Lobo, right? I did say no Lobo. Cause I feel like Lobo is Wolverine. Except, okay. so except so probably stronger. Flash? Okay. The flash. How can the flash come do? down to the bottom of like, you know, a, giant's pit and put him into like a lead box and lock him in before Wolverine even saw him. Can, can he? I think he could flash. Yeah. I mean, cause the thing flash moves so fast. Wolverine's got to see what he's slicing at. Yeah. Okay. Now let me yeah, ask and you. His senses aren't going to kick in at all for flash because his speed's just yeah. stupid. Doesn't stupid. make sense. Stupid fast. Yeah. So what if it's like no Justice League member? Then we got issues. Okay. How about what if uh, what if the Teen Titans had to deal with it? Man, dude, is Cyborg's not made of adamantium? So he slice through Cyborg. And Robin's um, dead. I don't even care. <laughs> <laughs> Robin's dead. Yeah. I don't know what Beast Boy could really do against him. Maybe you know Hulk up to Hulk size. Maybe turn into a Wolverine. And yeah, into a Wolverine. Maybe too. cuddle. Yeah. Does <laughs> does Beast Boy have a healing factor? I don't think Beast Boy's got a healing factor though, does he? Raven no. could teleport him to Trigon and let Trigon mm-hmm. deal with it. Well, here's the thing: that's like, true. Raven, Raven's powerful. I mean, Raven yeah. could probably put him in another dimension, right? Just to neutralize yeah. him. That, yeah, neutralize him. According but to I feel like that's a cheap Raven. way. That is. Yeah, let me yeah. see. Nightwing wouldn't really have much of a chance against him, as you said, Robin or Nightwing. Yep. Um, Starfire. She could inflict some damage, but she ain't killing him. She can like if she if she hangs up high enough, she can just keep blasting him with beams could, and stuff, right? While while uh, what's his name? Blast him from behind. Cyborg. Well, well, Beast Beast Boy turns into Wolverine and gnaws on his ankles. Right. Um, what about Wonder Girl with her lasso of truth swinging it around him to kind of like and, constrict him? And now he can't lie. And then other people load in, on, like start unloading on him until he goes into submission. And he just like a break. Could he just cut it? That's what I'm wondering. Because like the magical lasso, of, you know, that Wonder Girl utilizes, is that something that could be sliced over? Sliced over? Can it be broke? Can it be broken? Can it be sliced? I don't know. Because that's what I'm not sure. Let's see. Is the lasso of You think truth. that would be an easy way out? What it says a pocket knife and sliced anytime someone goes around. Yeah, I, I just feel like it, I'm sure it's like has some type of, you know, The lasso is, is completely is. unbreakable, immutable, and indestructible. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. So, He'd be like, the hell is this, bub? You know. They can start doing 20 questions with him. <laughs> <laughs> Who are you? I don't know. I don't know. It depends who's <laughs> writing me that day. <laughs> Before he has his memories back. I don't know. I really don't know. So, yeah, I mean, well, I guess they neutralize him. And that's, I don't know. And that's it. That's kind of tough because like Wolverine, you think would battle through anything, but I guess just the, depends on the, the strategy they use against him, I guess, right? Yeah. I mean, maybe Wolverine can, I mean, uh, maybe Raven come up with some spell to stop his mutant powers. His and, and then that's, yeah. 
I, I, I would buy it if somebody could make up some reason as to why that could happen. I mean, why not? I mean, it kind of makes me think like Raven's pretty, Raven's probably like pretty powerful. Like why, why shouldn't she be on the level of like Superman? Yeah. I mean, it's kind of like uh, underrated, like Doctor Strange. Totally. Yeah. Oh yeah. You know, you can, you can. I mean, if you think about it, you can do like so many things that it's ridiculous. Teleporting and spells and whatever. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No kidding. Mm -hmm. Fight Dormammu. All right. Who's got something next? Do you want me to throw one out there and how I would defeat them, or? To see how we we suggest how to defeat him. Like I kind of got an interesting one too right now. Okay. Yeah. So what if we had to throw Juggernaut into the DC universe? Okay. And okay. they had obviously no idea how to stop him because they didn't know the side rack was the root of his power. Okay. But no no Superman, I guess, right? Because Superman like isn't magic, right? Juggernaut's based off of magic. Okay. So Superman can't do much against magic, right? Is that his one of his weaknesses is magic? Like Satana right. can neutralize Superman, which is kind of sad, but she can. So you're saying he'd go to hit him and nothing would happen because of the helmet? Yeah, it's just like that. His strength is like it's the same average is as that, a normal person against the juggernaut. Is that be like but does that apply to a juggernaut? Because like it the magic grants him superhuman strength. Yes. So it's more but of a that, cause and effect. So, but Superman against magic, like the whole thing too is like, that's why Shazam, I guess, is such a great matchup for Superman because Shazam's magic based, isn't he? Yeah, sh- yeah I guess so. The wizard and whatever. And so it's like Shazam is gives Superman fits. Juggernaut is kind of like a Shazam level character. He would be mm-hmm. like a Shazam level character in the DC universe because he's just a normal man without the thing of Ciderac. And, you know, he's just Billy Batson without saying the word Shazam. So instead of saying a keyword, Juggernaut's gem gives him the magical abilities to wreak havoc wherever he wants. You know, in the Marvel universe, obviously, you know, you rip the helmet off of him and somehow take the gem out and he's, uh, you know, he's back to being a normal person. So would Superman be able to figure that out or it would have to be like Batman getting involved to figure out that kind of stuff? Well, could, could Juggernaut be stopped in the DC universe? Let's, let's forget Superman. Cause I feel like if Superman could stop him, he, he, he can't stop him and that's just fine. So what's climb up into space and suffocate or something like that. Um, I think, well, he, I think I, I could be wrong, but I, I think the gems would keep him alive in outer space. I I okay. could be wrong on that though. Um, but what if we did something where it was like, how about like Doctor is it Doctor Fate? Okay. Um, and maybe he's like, whoa, okay. you know what's happening here? But then he's able to kind of use his powers to to figure out the source, and then from there, um. They're able Even deeper, to. Constantine, since Constantine deals with demons. Interesting. Right? And so Constantine, since the, the gem's a demon side of rack, right? Um, is he in there? Is what? Is the is the Citarac guy in there? In the in the gem? Yeah. I think the the, the demon Citarac's part of the the gem, right? Or it gives them the power. Yeah, I think so. I think so. I'm trying to remember here. here. I'm pulling it up here on on Google. So, so could Constantine exercise the juggernaut? Interesting. But then they would have to fight Citarac or Kitarac or whatever, however you pronounce it. Yeah. Um one of them suggested a wager. Should that be so Justice League Dark would be kind of the kryptonite to the juggernaut i think it would be kind of fun where like they they just had this little problem with the juggernaut and then they figured out that's where his powers came from and they accidentally unleashed citarac and it has this crazier story and he's just 
yeah. ravaging DC and like and then maybe it gets to a point where they're like I think there's only one way out of this and they unleash Trigon to stop Citarak. Citarak. That'd be awesome, wouldn't it? Come on, yeah, that 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 story just got cool. It went from like, oh, we're yeah. fighting a juggernaut to oh my gosh, like this is a DC apocalypse. <laughs> yes. And that's just the juggernaut coming over to the DC universe screen. Mm-hmm. That kind of havoc. That's fun. And even if even if that couldn't happen in the current canon, I'm sure you can make an argument that some version of the juggernaut you can you can do this right. That because that that would yeah. be a fun story. Yeah. <clears throat> Especially since so I, Fox doesn't didn't do the juggernaut properly like that, you know. I have a uh, a weird idea to just stop juggernaut because you're just talking about you got to get his helmet off, right? Mm-hmm. In theory, in theory. So maybe you send in the Adam mm. to go in there, get underneath his helmet, and pop that thing off. Yeah. You know, he's, he's not like, gonna know he's there. He's on a, he's a subatomic level. He's not gonna know he's there. I'm gonna dig it. That would be awesome. It's like Ant Man. Dig it. It's like Ant Man, yeah. right? Yeah. That could work. That's how the Avengers would do it too, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. All right. I got one. I guess. And I, I already have a whole thing, so I'll let you guys, you know, come up with one. If I just what I said? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. So I know how to defeat this person. Um, so it's going to be Superman, the one that everyone has been waiting to hear, right? Superman goes in the Marvel Universe. You can't use Thor. How are you guys ever going to defeat him? So I, I have my way. Do you guys want to come up with yours? Or you want me to give you mine first? Can I give you like my totally fictional scenario of sure. what uh, I kind of uh, theorized about how to stop Superman in the Marvel universe if he ever showed up? Uh, yeah. Um, kryptonite radiations is weakness, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. If he stumbled into the Marvel universe, my argument is Hulk is green. And it's gamma radiation that infected the Hulk in the first place. So my theory is that gamma radiation is Marvel's same frequency of radiation as DC's kryptonite and Superman taking on the Hulk. He doesn't realize why, why am I getting weaker as I fight this guy and Hulk's getting stronger? Well, because you know, he's Hulk's not getting stronger. Superman's just getting weaker because of the gamma radiation flowing through Hulk's, body and he fights superman into a submission after a good good long battle that's that's fun that's fun that's yeah, a that's, that's an interesting that's a fun little writer's twist like in this universe yeah. it's the same frequency like yeah i could that's like we would, would say it's, it's whoever's writing the book right yeah oh yeah 100 right. percent. i like that that'd be a fun cool little, especially if you had like superman go around like trashing everybody like he's just beating up everyone and then stumbles upon the Hulk yeah. or Bruce Banner. And he just turns yeah. into the Hulk, he like hits him. That'd be awesome. Loses it. That's flying. What is that? Mm-hmm. Lance, I know exactly what yours is. <sighs> you do? I know exactly what it is. Cause it was, right. it was my first, my first instinct, but I, <laughs> mm-hmm. I feel like I almost should write it down to, to, to be like people. If you get it right, that people will like, know. But, right. Well, well, I, I I at least know the catalyst. I think. Okay. Okay. It's Black Cat's probability control. Oh my gosh! No, I didn't. I, oh really? I oh okay. I, I, I thought that's what you were doing because I was I was gonna go ahead and start thinking like, well, if we have the Scarlet Witch, and you know, if she does some like probability control, in or just theory, magic though, hmm? her yeah, and Doctor Strange magic. would probably just destroy him. Because heat magic would make some useless. Well, I thought I thought her probability would neutralize because he gets his powers from the the yellow sun, right? So if it shifted him, he would just be a regular person, right? I mean, it seems like something that should be able to be neutralized by the Scarlet Witch. 
Maybe that's mm. too simple. He, he holds into, he does keep energy for a while. <laughs> like, it's not like he, he just, he's not near the sun. He, I don't think he instantly becomes weak. He still has like strength until he like uses it up. It's from what based, I understand. Based on that theory, I could see what something fun about that. As you're saying though, blade yeah. molecule man can molecularly change the molecular level of the sun from a yellow sun to a different color sun, and Superman loses all of his abilities. Okay, yeah, but then the Earth, Earth is destroyed. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't have to be yellow sun. It could still be the same if you, frequency of heat. Or you could even change mm-hmm. it to, well, you know, I know we're also, this is, we're playing the whole, we know their weaknesses. Yeah. You know That's what I mean? Like, yeah. like, how would he know? Like, why would he change how the sun to red, right? Yeah. Or why would, why would, uh, why would Molecule Man turn himself into kryptonite? Oh yes, you know even I mean? better. Yeah, because he could do that. Sure, right? you know. yeah. He would know the weakness. My theory: he goes into uh, Manhattan and he's wreaking havoc, and he comes across this one guy, and he goes to hit him, and all of a sudden, he disappears because it was cloak, and now he's um, just in a dimension where there's no sun, yeah. and he just sits in there for a while, starts getting weak. And then Cloak just goes in there and beats the ever living crap out of it. Once he's just <laughs> a useless good. man, and that's it, it's over. Wow, that's pretty awesome. I like it. No, yeah, that's that's pretty simple. Super creative. Is that pretty yeah. simple, right? Yes, that works <laughs> though. It works. It does. Like he just he sees him, he goes after him, and he just goes whoop. See you yeah. later. Spot could do and the you same can't thing. Get out, right? Yeah, Spot could do the same thing to him. The guy that's got yeah. the black mm-hmm. portal things on him. Yeah. And could Reed Richards put him in the negative zone? No sun there either, right? Yeah, definitely not. Yeah. I was just thinking of Reed Richards. I was I was trying to think of like how they can temporarily knock out Superman for Reed Richards to check him out and then they figure out like how dense he is and stuff, and then he's an alien and and from there. Uh, it would be easy to figure out how to defeat him if Reed Richards could just examine him, you know, somehow. Uh. Yeah. So by the way, the whole Thor thing, Thor could just send him to like Asgard or some other dimension where there's no yellow sun and just destroy him. Yeah. And magic could take him down to hell too. Oh, no, limbo. True. Yeah, but limbo, yeah. It's like Have Nightcrawler go. blink him into the wall. Uh, yeah. It's not going to do anything. No, that, He's that almost break out of the wall. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, they, they. I do like the limbo thing. That's cool. Yeah. Mm. Well, I guess, I guess Professor X could read his mind, and then uh, they would figure out they would figure out how to feed him just from that, right? Yeah. You know, Superman's his like his body's like invulnerable to like like everything, right? Yeah. But is his insides invulnerable to everything? I'd say yes. Like, could 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 Invisible Woman put a bubble inside of him and just expand it till Pop he him. explodes? I think she'd have a hard time doing that. Yeah, she probably wouldn't be able to do it. Just get a nosebleed. I mean, his eyeballs even, like, block bullets, yeah. right? So, yeah. I mean, yeah, I guess it's... It's all it's dense. It's all dense. He's not. He's not very squishy. Okay. Anyone? Anyone got got one next, or or should I go? You can go. You can go. All right. All right. Doing this. Doing this one for Kent. <clears throat> Black suit Spider Man, but you can't. You can't stop him with Superman. Black suit Spider Man. You can't stop him with Superman either. It's always going to be, be you tough. can't stop him yeah. with Superman because that's just not fair. <laughs> It'd be tough to defeat a symbiote. I mean, would the... Because, um... Yeah. Well, he's sensitive to heat, fire, and okay. sound. Okay. And so you would... Oh. Let me see. What you'd have to separate the symbiote from Spider Man, but then that person would have to defeat Spider Man too, as well. Would they? And so, would Spider Man have, like, I don't know, dude, I don't know how he could protect the symbiote from supersonic sound. 
I, I, Black yeah, Canary. I was say, Black, Black the Siren. What? Black Siren in the DC Universe? Yeah. She would just yeah. yell at him. Suit Black yeah. Canary? Black Canary? Is Black, Black Siren? Siren a character? Yeah. Oh, I've never heard of that character before. And, um, and Firestorm. Oh, it, it's, it's Black Canary. It's, it's the original Black Canary. Black Canary. Like, oh, okay. That was the Golden Age name. Oh, I didn't know that. No. And, and Firestorm could maybe molecularly rearrange the atoms of the symbiote to defeat, you know, the defeat the symbiote over in the DC universe. I don't know if that's something fair. Do you know what I mean? Like if the symbiote tries jumping on other people in the DC universe, Firestorm could just, just kind of molecularly disintegrate them. Yeah. Um, let me see. It's a, uh, Yeah, dude. I, I, unfortunately, I could see Symbiote Spider-Man get defeated pretty easily. Pretty easily in the DC universe. Okay. With all due respect to that. Okay. Interesting. I mean, it it would be, uh, man, dude. Yeah, I said too. That's the thing too. Is like when they first designed the Symbiote, it's just the the sound weakness and the fire weakness is uh I think kind of such an easy out to defeat Symbiotes. I mm-hmm. know on the Keenan Black they kind of. Null kind of mutated away from that. But if it's symbiote Spider-Man before, he's just a fraction of Null. He doesn't have the same amount of power source that Null does. Yeah, yeah. Interesting. And I was trying to make it, I was like, yeah, Black Suit Spider-Man, this is gonna, <laughs> this gonna be, come on. I wish it would be that easy. Do you know what I mean? It's like, I guess the symbiote, what Spider-Man could do is reach out right over Firestorm's head before firestorm started using his abilities to suffocate uh-huh. him yeah. but i don't know do you know what i mean like how quickly firestorm reacts to molecularly rearrange the symbiote's structure to be harmless okay so that would be uh that would be that would be i think the neutralizer over in the dc universe would be firestorm for the symbiotes yeah or black canary which wow black canary yeah. Which I wasn't even, wasn't even expecting something something like that. I wonder if Peter Parker can devise some kind of device that's like earmuffs for the symbiote. Do you know what I mean, dude? Huh. I don't know if that's a, you know if that's like a pot. It's obviously it never been be, thought of before. It would. I think it would have to be like some type of uh, device he wears that mm-hmm. absorbs sound. Uh, you know, like vibrations in the air somehow, so uh, that way yeah. it doesn't affect. Like you have to have like a chest plate or like a belt or something that absorbs sounds that comes out. Well, I, th- I think I that's th- like the only way. I think in theory the you can sound even. Well, I think you can play certain tones that neutralize other tones. So you just have like a big like boombox on your shoulder well, to neutralize this. Well, you have some <laughs> kind of device that's both a microphone and a speaker, so that way mm-hmm. it detects certain sounds. And knows what it needs to play to neutralize the other sense. I'm sure you can make some kind of BS scientific explanation, you know, around that, right? Yeah. Yeah. Why not? So, what you do is so then Batman helps him make that for some reason, right? Yes. Or no. And Peter Parker, I guess, yeah. is good enough, right? Yeah. Why would Batman? Batman doesn't know anything. He doesn't make stuff, he pays people to do it for him. He paid Peter Parker to do it. And then he paid gets Peter Parker to help symbiote. himself. Yeah. Because mm-hmm. Batman ends up with the symbiote at the end of the story and becomes <laughs> and becomes bad. And then he kills Superman, you know, and then comes Batum. <laughs> I am Batman. <laughs> Batum. The Venom Bat. Venom Bat. Bat and Venom. He becomes Bane. <laughs> oh, that's interesting. Yeah, his veins fueled with venom. Oh yeah, yeah. You what become if, the very thing you if, swore to destroy. What if uh, venom got on Bane? Just be. Mm-hmm. That would be oh. awesome. That'd be crazy. Mm-hmm. And then he'll break Batman's back again. Mm-hmm. Or just rip his spine out of his back. How ironic is Tom Hardy played both Bane 
<laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah. Wow. Wow. Well, they both were fueled by venom. Yeah. No kidding. Yeah. But we were talking about Scarlet Witch earlier. Could anybody in the DC universe stop Scarlet Witch? Wow. Man, oh man. Is uh, Could you know House of any, M in the DC universe? Is anything off limits here? I don't know. Can you I imagine? Mean, like, are you talking about like overpowered, like 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 impossible man, like stuff like that? Is that what you mean? Uh-huh. Well, no, well, because no, Scott, which is in the DC universe. No, I know, but they have similar people like yeah. that in the DC universe, my point. Like, could Mitzelplik stop Scarlet Witch? That would be wildly disappointing. Yeah, because I'm trying to think of, like, someone that is dimension-altering. Trigon. Trigon? Why not? Scarlet Witch? It'd be a good it's fight. It's kind of a big card to play. I, I mean, know. they... Yeah. They made Scarlet Witch so stupid powerful. I know. It's, the whole it's unbelievable. You almost have to she like could turn the whole DC universe into the Marvel universe. <laughs> no <laughs> more alternate universes. No, no more, more DC. <laughs> <laughs> That's what would happen if Marvel bought DC Comics. There'd be no more DC <laughs> and they're all dead. And reboot. Um is there someone who's in the DC universe that's like immune to magic? That's the question. It's immune to magic. Man. I'm not sure. Is Dark Side immune to magic? Oh, Dark Side's like. I mean, Dark Side might actually be able to win. I don't know. He's his abilities are like insane. Yeah. Right, he can control like gravity and all this other crazy stuff, and so would Dark Side just send all of his uh, apocalypse horde at Scarlet Witch. I feel like Dark Side's probably one of those like he's gonna defeat like ninety nine percent of the people you throw at him. Like so through I, the Marvel Universe portal. So in my in my quick little Google search here, uh, Mister Mixaplick as as like one of the best like magic resistant kind of characters you know so that might that might actually be the the way to defeat her so i was on the right track with whistle play yeah yeah i think so um other other people other people are zatanna uh black adam anti-monitor oh anti-monitor that's interesting oh black adam is immune to uh magic Something I I don't honestly I don't know enough about Black Adam. Um, I mean, there's a degree of magic, right? But he's kind of like the opposite of of Shazam, right? So which is magic? So he be he's anti magic. He's like magic, right? but anti magic to uh. So as much as yeah. we don't know too much about uh about Mitzelplex, actually the whole dark side thing. I'm trying to think if she would have killed Thanos, she could she would kill. Dark side, but Dark side can just resurrect himself. So I mean, I guess it's like temporary. But but instead of like just the um oh gosh, what what are what are Thanos's people called? The is it the Black Order? The the Dark Order? Oh, Black Order? Is it the Black, Black Order? Order? I just felt like that was wrong. Uh, he's got like the new gods. Like I mean, he's got yeah. Steppenwolf and Granny Goodness and. And all of them, I mean, like they're that's like fighting the the Eternals. <sighs> you, okay. you know what I mean. Plus, yeah. you know, does so let let me ask you this: Does the anti life equation come into play with her, hmm. or um. does the or does her probability control? mess with that stop the anti-life equation does can she reverse it and then take over apocalypse and then you have a real problem you have dark you have like the dark apocalypse darker than scarlet yeah storyline yeah (laughs) darker than scarlet that that would be crazy yeah 
I don't know. She's so stupid powerful. Like she's she's pretty much becoming like Marvel's Superman. Like how do you stop her? Yeah. Apparently Mixoplex. Apparently Mixoplex. <laughs> Maybe with a riddle. <laughs> now, another thing that's popped in my head is like someone that could give the Marvel Universe fits. Would the Flash give the Marvel Universe fits or no? What what is um, would give him fits? Who could stop? Like who would be able to stop the Flash in his tracks? I kind of got an idea going through my head now, and it may be too simple. <sighs> so, so for some reason they have to stop the Flash, right? Is yeah. what you're what you're saying? Flash, hard to Johnny catch. Quick. Yeah. Flash. Johnny Quick from the uh, the crime syndicates slides over to the Marvel universe. Oh, okay. Okay. All right. So I, I think, and I don't know if this is too obvious or, yeah. or easy. Um, if flash is doing something, nobody knows what's going on, right? If this is the Marvel universe, they're like, Whoa, just this, this thing blew up or this thing disappeared. And we don't know. Right. Um, Reed Richards, gets wind of it and like read we gotta figure out what's going on it's like okay well i think based on this and that the next place he might strike is this so he sets up whatever sensors and he's able to realize that it's it's not that it's it's a person just going really fast Mm -hmm. okay so if that's what's happening he has to create a device using um technology that makes the negative zone open up but it opens and closes so fast that the only way to get caught in this is if you're going faster than the speed of light so they surround this point with this device that opens and closes the negative zone so quickly but it doesn't affect anyone else only somebody who's fast enough to get caught in there because that's how fast it's blinking and flash runs right into there and he gets scooped into the negative zone. And they trap him in there. Yeah. I like that. I, I like that a lot. I didn't even think that deep into it, which is freaking epic. <laughs> I mean, I can say too, it was like that since the flash is over here or Johnny quicks over here, stealing stuff, you put the bait inside of that negative zone window. And then as okay. soon as he flies in, okay. jumps in and try to snag it, then he, they trap him in there. So you were, you were on that same that's track, cool. right? I was thinking even mine was probably oversimplified okay. is like the one thing that I didn't think about right away is flash can time travel and dimension hop oh. by going so fast. I was thinking about the fact too, is if uh, he didn't know this hero in the Marvel universe was there, would Iceman be able to freeze him up quick enough for someone to catch him and knock him out? I would say no, because I think flash is just, He's so quick, like it's. I mean, like I, I don't even think you can compare him to Quicksilver, if I'm not mistaken, because like Quicksilver yeah, no, is fast. He's, no, no, Quicksilver does like 300 miles an hour. Like, yeah, Flash. He's like travel. he's like a yeah. million times faster than the speed of light. Like so, I'm not even joking. Yeah, yeah. Flash Silver Surfer. He's faster than Silver Surfer, and Silver Surfer is the fastest person in the Marvel universe. Mm-hmm. Wow. So wow. I like your, I think your, your portal idea of like baiting him with something that he's trying to take from the Marvel universe mm-hmm. and bait it in the negative zone. Cause he thinks he doesn't understand what the negative zone is in the Marvel universe. And then closing it mm-hmm. that instant he goes into that motion. Cause since he's so fast, as soon as this, this net, we'll call it a, a virtual net that Reed Richards sets up. As soon as it mm-hmm. catches something, it turns off because he's fast yeah. enough to be like, Whoa, I went I did something. So I'm gonna, yeah, exactly. I, I have an idea hmm? how to defeat him. And it's not going to, it's going to be an accidental defeat. Okay. Okay. And this is a great what if comic. It's going to be, <laughs> I can't wait. I, I can't wait for this to get published one day. Well, long because it's Marvel and DC. So he's going to be zooming around, zooming, you know, destroying everything. He's going to go by Brooklyn, Manhattan, and he gets over to Queens, and he's thumbing through there. Spider-Man's like, what's going on? And he goes by Spider-Man's house. Aunt May's outside, taking out the trash. 
Trash can falls over and a banana peel falls in the ground. Flash <laughs> slips on it, goes flying off the earth into out- outer space, and he dies. <laughs> no. <laughs> Flash said his, his biggest fear, you know, is, is slipping on a banana peel while, while he's running, right? It happened in a, com- in a comic, it happened. Mm-hmm. He slipped on a banana peel and went into outer space. That's just what's going to happen. There's so much debris in Manhattan, he's not used to it. All these people... <laughs> He's gone. It's so dumb. <laughs> Aunt May destroys the Flash. <laughs> Aunt May defeats the Flash. <laughs> Just in time to make the make the wheat cakes for Peter by the time he gets home, too. Right. That's so silly because if you're that fast, like you're you're just disintegrating stuff that you're coming into contact with. Yeah, the whole, I mean, the whole his whole ability. They made him too fast, and it's just mm-hmm. stupid because a- anything his feet should be touching will just be destroyed. I mean, his own, the fact that his own body can even withstand the pressure or like the, like anything that the, the speed that he's going is ridiculous. Well, then he should be, he should be invulnerable to literally anything, like any punch from any hero or building falling on him or anything. Well, I think he is. It's going to be, he? More, at least now. I mean, he is. Oh, I know, but it's just, he, he's pretty powerful, but it's just, the whole thing's ridiculous. Like everything should just be set on fire when he, or just gets obliterated when he runs past it. That's the that's the thing with DC I noticed is that like when like when you're powerful, you're like Superman, right? But there's mm-hmm. like tell me there's like an in between though, because you're either like Superman or you're you're Batman. Like where's where's the in between on that? You know, because like even Wonder Woman is that strong, Green Lantern is very powerful. Cyborg's a good in between. Like cyborg. Because he's a he's a robot. Stra- yeah, he's like that. Uh, he's, he's more powerful than Batman, but human wise, but he's not elite level strength. But they make, I mean? but they start making like Batman capable of like ridiculous things, you know, like, mm-hmm. oh, well, Batman will just create an EMP to stop Cyborg because <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Batman has an excuse for, for everything. Right. Yeah. But you're, you're right. Question. So, 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 Cyborg, mid-level. Sorry. Yeah. Like and Beast Boy, obviously, like these the mid level characters that are, you know, not invulnerable but totally vulnerable. Yeah, and but not human vulnerable. Maybe Starfire. Maybe Starfire, Starfire is a good is example. Definitely like probably a mid level. Yeah, because she yeah. she can't fight Superman, but she should be able to beat anyone with without powers. Hawkman. Hawkman. Yeah. yeah Hawkman. That's a good one. So, so maybe maybe they're out there. It's just a lot of the times it just seems very, you know, like it leans those two ways, you know. I just think they have a lot of characters that are just like, oh, I have this ability, and it's like you can't go any higher. Where like 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 you have Flash, who's like stupid fast, and then Marvel has like Quicksilver, who's like, I mean, there's cars that go faster than him. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. Quicksilver. <laughs> Now, would Mr. Miracle be able to be stopped in the Marvel Universe? The escape artist. Okay. Could anyone capture Mr. Miracle in the Marvel Universe? I'm not gonna lie, who's Mr. Miracle? <laughs> am, I, am I dumb for asking that? He's the uh, red Scott Free. The red and yellow guy with the green cape. Yeah. And he's married to Big Barda. So he has oh, I didn't know that's what his name was. He has superhuman strength, agility, speed, coordination, and reflexes, along with incredible stanima. He's one of the the new gods, isn't he? Mm-hmm. I think he's got powers with the new gods, right? No, well, his place of origin is Apocalypse, so something like that. Mm-hmm. Immortality, indomitable will, teleportation. Well, I mean, so would there be? He's a limited healing factor, but he's in, he has immortality. So, like, what's that even matter? Almost, you know. Hmm. He's immune to fire, electricity, freezing, and mind control. His so name saying, is Scott Free. Yeah, Scott Free. It's a great name. Oh <laughs> such my a, gosh! Because he gets off Scott Free character in the DC universe. What is Lance? In what the is Marvel he? Universe, what kind? What kind of havoc could he rain? What is he immune to? Uh, fire, electricity, freezing, and mind control. Fire. So Professor X can't do anything to this guy. Wow. And he has an indomitable will, whatever that means. That means he's just in it to win it. 
Uh, a Green Lantern can't do anything to because <laughs> of the yellow. Okay, he's in the Marvel universe. I mean, how do you stop I, him? Get throw Doctor Strange at him? I mean, if if I'm if you're talking about like defeating him in like 15 seconds, like Impossible Man, Impossible Man, or Molecule Man. I mean, that's true, Molecule Man. But I mean, that's like throwing Superman at anyone else, you know. I mean, even more so. Um, okay, he's immune to all of that. Is he's immune to fire? Yes. Okay. All right. Can okay. Doctor Strange mess with him? Why? Yeah. Why not? Right. Put him in a time loop like he did with uh, um, Dormammu. Oh gosh, dude. Yeah, Dormammu. Thank you, dude. Could you put? You know, Mr. Miracle in the time loop, and he keeps on thinking he escapes, but he doesn't. Over and over and over again. He's immune to toxins and diseases. Hmm. That's interesting. That's easy. Some pestilence go up to him. No, he's immune to toxins. Oh, he's and immune diseases. to him. Okay. Immune. He's immune to toxins and diseases, too. Yeah. So, like, you can't. It's like, there's, there's a whole lot of things you cannot do to him. Like, if you thought Superman was bad, at least he has kryptonite. Yeah. Man. He's the world's greatest escape artist. He can escape anything. Gosh. So Is there a Thor in the DC universe? Because it says here he knocked out Thor. There's, there's a version. Of, I think every universe has their own, you know, Norse mythology. They throw in their own Thor every once in a while. Okay. Interesting. Okay. How about... How does Marvel Universe deal with Mr. Miracle? Okay, so he's just he's just going crazy, right? And mm-hmm. and nobody knows why. And then Spider Man, just you know, he's like one of the last ones standing, and he's doing his best. And Spider Man is just getting his, you know, what handed to him. And you know, he realizes that um, somebody killed one of Mr. Miracle's loved ones, and so. Spider-Man starts telling him the story of, you know, Uncle Ben. And he tells him with great power comes great responsibility. And Mr. Miracle starts crying. And he realizes what he's (laughs) doing is wrong. (laughs) And Spider-Man just gets him to become a good guy again. (laughs) That wouldn't... Speaking on that theory, you're getting... Like, I was kind of interested that you brought on Spider-Man. All right. Going back to one of Lance's favorites, would Black Cat be able to mess with all of his... You know, his ability to escape because of the luck. Probably I, I, I was just going through like all of his powers to try to figure out how Black Cat can stop him. <laughs> yeah, can you, can't you do it? I, I think there's a chance. And it's, you know, it says that his uh, Scott possesses greater power as the embodiment of the anti life equation. Okay. So oh. if that's the case, she could manipulate, right? She could change, you know, a variable in that. In theory, and and make it like obsolete. So would Domino be able to do the same thing then too? No, because Domino is not as powerful as Black Cat. She's okay. a useless piece of comedy. Whoa! I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Whoa! I'm joking. I'm joking. I love Domino. Um, I don't know. I I think she could stop him, and and it would be like one of those like weird, cheap ways where she's just like. It's just Mr. Miracle. Probability is falling on her side, and yeah. bad luck constantly, and all of a sudden he somehow loses his power because of the anti-life equation, and then I don't know, falls and slips on a Asgardian blade, and he dies. I don't, I don't know. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Miracle's luck runs out. The black, the black cat has crossed your path. Mm-hmm. There are, there are no more miracles here. All right. Anybody, we got one more. We're we going to wrap this up. Could the DC universe figure out, say, for instance, Black Panther goes over to try to conquer the DC universe with the Wakandan army. Okay. Would he be able to, um, I think of like a similar thing over in the DC universe would be able to overthrow. Um, would T'Challa be able to say, 
take down Gotham and all the Gotham allies that Batman has. Hmm. Does that include the villains? If they need to, I don't know. I don't think it's like the, the what like say the villains like say for instance Joker makes a deal with T'Challa, or even Ra's al Ghul makes a deal with the League of Assassins to help T'Challa take over Gotham. Because like I'll I'll get rid of Batman. You know they're like I think I mean, this I guy could can do see it. T'Challa going in there being like Batman looks like a bad guy. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like it's just like you could tr- you could turn it where it's like. There's this guy, you know, he stalks people and, and like you wouldn't know. Like you'd just be like, oh, okay, yeah, it makes sense. You know what I mean? Well, Wakanda, people, like because a, people don't like him. T'Challa see some of his designs inside of Wayne Enterprises technology. Oh. He thinks he's been more or less to like Wakandan technology has been hacked by Wayne Enterprises. Wow. And or then he sees, he also sees that he has all these different ways to kill Wonder Woman and Superman, these people that are heroes. Oh, and he's like, this guy must be a bad guy. That's a good one too, yeah. Wow. He's secretly trying to kill everyone. Yeah. So he and takes Rachel's down Superman. he takes down Batman and everyone else takes over Gotham. Yeah. Wow. That might be a fun story. I know. I know. We totally just like that was not what we were trying to accomplish. Yeah, that was. <laughs> but that <laughs> we, we changed the story. <laughs> we said T'Challa just take over Gotham, uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. throw, overthrow Gotham. Maybe Gotham's too small of a city compared to Wakanda in a country. Yeah, because be, I mean, because whole... he's so he's so good. Like, why would he do that mm-hmm. unless he had a really, yeah. really good reading? I think he would like want to set he would think he was setting Gotham free, you know, from, yeah. from the, from the evils of the Batman. Yeah. You know, or would he yeah. do that and then take over Wayne enterprises and make it and actually do something good instead of it being like this horrible town. Like he like gets his army in there and all of a sudden it's like, Oh, look, it's, it's great here now. And then he marries, <laughs> he marries Catwoman in this alternate, in this alternate reality. Yes. And they're just like a couple of cats. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. There, there's like a story this. in there. That would be fun. Yeah, I could do that. Fun to read. Yeah. And that by the way, Black Panther it. would destroy Batman. Yes. <laughs> yes. Definitely. And and he would set him up too. Like he would let Batman think he came up with some tech to stop him. And it's like, huh, that's cute. And then Chichal would be ready because they're like ten times more more advanced than anything you know Batman and his friends would come up with. That would be cool. That's the story I want to read. Marvel, DC, let's make this happen. Mm-hmm. That's the Marvel versus DC I want to see there. Well, yeah, that was that was fun. We, we might have to do it, do that again. Uh, you know, any of those ones that you guys heard us, you know, bring up. If you have any creative ways to take down some of these characters, you know, let us know on on Facebook or Instagram. We're at Nightcap Chat on Facebook and Nightcap underscore Chat on Instagram. It doesn't have to be anything cr- like crazy. Like it, it could be something silly and funny, mm-hmm. like the Aunt May taking out the Flash or whatever. <laughs> like, feel free to say whatever. Yeah, because we we saw what those what if comics had, and <laughs> yeah. the, the, the sky's the limit there. Again, yeah, dude, guys, thanks again for listening. This is always fun. Um, you catch us at Drawn to Comics downtown Glendale and on Facebook, Instagram and Twitter and drawn to comics.com. I appreciate you guys all your support and thanks for listening. Lance. And uh, you can catch me on Twitch, Twitter, and Instagram at tales of Lance. And on blade O'Neill, you can find my exploits at blade O'Neill on Facebook and sometimes Twitter or no blade O'Neill on Instagram and Twitter. I, I know my social media handles. I swear and Blade O'Neill VO on Facebook. Uh, I got some fun stuff coming up, and I, of course, post about pop culture nonsense that I'm into, like comic books, video games, Pokemon cards, movies, TV shows, you know, whatever. Uh, I got some fun stuff coming out. Probably do a book giveaway soon, audiobook I narrated. Um, and, and I know, we've been talking about this for several episodes. Um that we were going to open some Shining Fates Pokemon cards. 
and I, I got everything set up on my computer. We're ready to do it. So, um, be on the lookout for social media for an official date announcement, but everything is set up to do it. I got a little extra equipment to make it look, to make it look very nice. So we're going to do it and we're going to do it right. And I even bought more Shining Fates cards. So we're going to open even more packs than we originally were going to, you know, it's like, that's, that's how it's going down. Uh, but we appreciate you all taking the time to listen. We love you. Be safe. And we will catch you all next week. Thank you. Every week. <laughs>